Hello and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to go over the uh, profit margins versus minimum wage versus minimum living cost. If you'd like to know how to save these, continue watching. As you can tell, they're fighting for a minimum wage. And the real problem is, is that the minimum wage does not reflect the minimum cost of living. So... If you were to go and look and see like average apartments inside your area, right, here we go. Now I actually have some apartments there <clears throat> with actual prices. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Hollywood, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. I don't know, what's like the cheapest one on here? Yeah, one thousand six hundred and eighty. All right, so if you were to live there by yourself, <clears throat> the cost was one thousand six hundred and eighty-four dollars. Every single place that rents requires a three times the amount. So let's times that by three. Alright, so now you have to make $5,502 off of one person's income to live by yourself. Now we're going to divide this by four, because there are four weeks in a month. And then we're going to divide this again to find out our hourly rate, which is going to be 40 hours. So that means you have to make $31 $31.5 an hour in order to afford to live on your own. Ugh. Now, we just looked and said the minimum wage is raising to 15 That is half of what you actually need to make in order to live anywhere by yourself. So this is the problem that we face. <clears throat> but the rebuttals of these things is basically things like this. Progressive politicians love to talk about raising the minimum wage. It makes them sound caring, compassionate, concerned. They're on the side of the worker standing against the greedy employer. The current call is for a national $15 an hour minimum wage, more than double the current federal rate of $7.25. A number of cities and states are already there, including New York, California, Washington, D.C., and Seattle. Others are considering it. The left casts the minimum wage debate as a war between employee and employer. But most business owners pay their workers. They consider this a war between them. But what's really happening here is the employer doesn't really have any sense of government protection. So the employer pays 40% in taxes <clears throat> as opposed to his employees pay like a 15% taxes and then the rich also pay even more percentage in taxes so the profit margins for these companies is absolutely ridiculously small so you're looking at I don't know after 40% if your minimum requirements are 60% you're only making a 20% profit margin on anything you actually sell and yeah, that's that's where a lot of the problems are coming into play. And not every single company actually makes a 20%, you know, profit margin. We're going to go and watch this so you can understand. Because the guy who's talking actually owns a really famous company. So I'll let, him, I'll let him continue. As much as they can. Finding and keeping good people is the hardest part of any employer's job. I know. For 17 years, I ran CKE restaurants the parent company of Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Our company and franchise restaurants employed over 75,000 people. But as with most retail businesses, our profit margins were razor thin. Based on my experience, if we adopt the national minimum wage of $15, here's what will happen. One, a lot of people will lose their jobs or have their hours reduced. According to a 2014 Congressional Budget Office study, just a $10 minimum wage would cost half a million jobs as businesses terminate employees. Now, 
An alternative for this will be to protect the profit margins for the companies themselves. So the first thing what I would do is I'd actually make the requirements of you pay like X amount of dollars per taxes instead of a percentage. And then so they can, they can basically calculate how much money they're going to be paying for every single thing. As opposed to after you've already done this, oh, here you go, now you owe me 4, 7, 10, 12, however much you're going to owe you at the end of the year come tax season because everybody hates taxes. <clears throat> Unless you're really broken and the government gives you money. So, really if they start to protect the profit margin, I think they should protect it at you know, maybe a 60% or varying depending on the industry, then a lot of these problems wouldn't happen. But let's, go on, let's continue on. Obviously, far more jobs would be lost at $15 an hour. To survive, employers would have to reduce hours, even for workers who managed to keep their jobs. That's a pay cut. Two, businesses will close, and the jobs they created will... Now, he says it's a pay cut, but if you're cutting jobs, you're cutting your hours, you make more money, you're probably going to be making about the same what you're making at the lower thing, but you're just not working as much. How does this benefit you? I mean, you can look for other jobs during this time. Um, another thing you can do is you can also try to build your own company. I know a lot of people in this day and age are really not that into building their own companies, but, you know, there was a time in America when... Uh, that's all we did. We, everybody was constantly trying to make their own companies. It was probably about 150 years ago, and I missed out on that. <clears throat> but let's continue on. Disappear. A recent report from researchers at the Harvard Business School found that each $1 increase in the minimum wage results in a 4 to 10% increase in the likelihood of restaurants closing. Now, like I said, if we protected the profit margins for companies, these things wouldn't be happening. Because the problem is we're protecting the employees of this is how much money you make. But the whole bottom line is companies have to make money. And if companies do not make money, and I own my own company, so I, I practice what I preach. You know, I've, Jesus, man. It's like $25 an hour is what I pay my guys. And that's still like really low compared to what we just saw in the math chart here but at least it's a livable cost here in southern california at least where i live that was los angeles you know i live in like the long beach at lakewood bellflower area so it's a little bit cheaper but still an over seven dollar an hour increase to fifteen dollars would be devastating not only for restaurants but for small businesses and their employees Three, young people will lose that entry-level job opportunity. My first job was scooping ice cream at a Baskin-Robbins in Cleveland, Ohio in the 1960s. Now, it paid just a dollar an hour. A lot of us have already lost our entry-level jobs, and if we do, they're basically just slave jobs. So I don't really see what he's talking about in this one. I've, I had a first-time job. I know quite a few people who have had a first-time job. You know, Target's always hiring for first-time employees, and it's always during the holiday season, so you can easily get a job there. But it taught me valuable lessons, like the importance of showing up on time, teamwork, and presenting a happy demeanor to customers. No one can get that better job until they have their first job. Four, the cost of all workers will have to go up. If you hire a dishwasher at $15 an hour, your cooks will be unhappy with their wages. Hmm. You're going to have to pay everybody more, which increases labor costs across the board. That's more pressure on profits. Too much. Yeah, he's right about that. I mean, too much pressure on profits can actually really hurt a business, which is the reason why I say protect the profit margin. That is the critical thing. Much pressure, and you're out of business. Five, fewer people will open businesses. $15 an hour is a very steep hill to climb. Would-be entrepreneurs will do the math on labor costs and realize it's just not worth the risk. This is a real cost to the economy that we can't measure. A company that never exists, never employs anyone. Six. The reason why my company exists is to try to help people make at least a minimum living cost. 
and also you know provide people with a service. So I really don't think that's that's a factor at all. Prices for everything will go up as businesses pass higher labor costs along to consumers. One of two things will happen. Either consumers won't pay the higher prices and businesses will lay off workers or close, or consumers will pay higher prices and have less money to spend elsewhere. I really what needs to happen is the employees need to realize that your money talks and if you you know spend your comp your money on companies that are paying livable wages and you're paying more for them in the long run it also helps you out more money in the economy and everybody's happy so if you go to the cheapest person you're probably not going to get the best and you really just got to think about really where your money is going as opposed to in the short term of I'm saving money. Either way, the higher minimum wage will represent a drag on the overall economy. Now this may sound like doom and gloom, but it's already a reality for many business owners and workers in the cities and states that are raising the minimum wage. In San Francisco, AQ, a 2012 James Beard Award finalist for the best new restaurant in America, saw rising labor costs drive its profit margins down from 8.5% in 2012 to 1.5% 1 by 2015. So it shut the doors. Jeremy Marin's chain of Cuban restaurants in New York closed two locations because of minimum wage increases and has raised prices at the restaurants he's still operating. The minimum wage, he said, is going up too fast. We can't catch our breath. Kevin Mack. Well, that is a problem. And the reason why I say it is because I said we're going back to the profit margins. You got to protect the profit margins for companies. Technomy is a chiropractor in California. I'll be moving my two companies out of Los Angeles, he wrote in a letter to the New York Times. When the city compels me to pay employees $15 an hour, it comes out of my pocket. Last year, my employees made more than I did. Now, these stories are already all too common. Expect them to become more so as cities and states pile on the $15 minimum wage bandwagon. So, if a $15 minimum wage doesn't help workers and doesn't help employers, who exactly does it help? Well, maybe just the progressive politicians who manage to mislead voters into believing that it's the right thing to do. And that they do. They do mislead you into thinking it's the right thing to do. And it's it's completely wrong. You, you have to balance the entire economy. And it, it starts with the small businesses themselves. I mean, you, you can't be taxing them 40%. And then they have such a small profit margin here. Like, that, that is absolutely ridiculous. The profit margins for every single company should be protected. And then once we get that protected, then you can start paying people livable wages. And depending on the industry, the profit margins will vary, obviously. Because not every single company's profit margins are going to be the same. <clears throat> Sounding caring, compassionate, and concerned is all well and good. But having a job is better. I'm Andy Puzder for Prager University. Prager U teaches what is. If you like their video, go and subscribe to Prager University. All right, so now is the state businesses, health plans, and whatnot. So you can check this website out. This is the Department of Labor. This has a lot of good information on basically exactly what's going on inside the economy right now. And then here is the presidential election. You just go to whitehouse.gov. And this is actually uh, our current president right now letter. Basically, buy from Americans, hire Americans. But, I mean, maybe I missed something in there, but I didn't see anything in there about protecting company profit margins. And I know this seems like Oh, like you a terrible person. Why are you trying to protect you know, company profit margins? They're evil. Like, I own my own company. I know how expensive it is. You know, it's it's insane. And I own IT security systems and I own IT repair insurance. 
and the cost for both of these companies is ridiculous. And just to hire somebody, like I try to pay my employees livable wages, which is like two hundred and fifty dollars a day. And even according to this calculator, like I am hugely underpaying them. I'm paying them basically like twenty five dollars an hour, and that I'm I'm under like six dollars right there. So the hard part is trying to get. You know, companies to also buy your products for these prices. <sighs> so, I just wanted to kind of show you guys, you know, the the entire picture here for this specific problem. But it, it also falls over into other problems like debt. You know, if you do not make enough money to live, you know, this also affects debt, obviously, because you're not making enough money to live. So you're going to start putting stuff on credit cards and whatnot. So that hurts, you know, your economy because if you're running off credit. And then eventually it goes to homelessness because you can't afford to live anywhere because everything is so expensive. You know, we go back to that. It's really, and it all kind of starts just from when you're in school. You know, they, they don't really teach you how to create a company. You know, what you can do to own your own company. Like, I... I don't understand that. In, in school, they taught you basically how to, you know, be a follower and get good grades. And if you get a really good grades, you can go to college and get a really good job. And then you're set for life. But that that doesn't happen anymore. There's so many people following that same plan. It's, it doesn't work. But uh, anyways, this is Joshua Andrew Kennedy. And I'm checking out.